Yang berhormat Datuk Seri Mustafa bin Muhammad Datuk Zainal, dear members of CCIFM, dear friends. Uh, first of all, we hope to find you all in good health, you, your loved ones, your teams, and we hope that the resilient spirit is intact following the exceptional situation the world has faced. Thank you. The global, global economic slowdown is unprecedented and challenges many operations and business models. Our recent member survey showed a patchwork of situations with good resilience for MNCs who could also enjoy French government financial aids for some and tougher times for entrepreneur companies here in Malaysia. Retrenchment and investment postponement have been mentioned. However, a majority remain confident in a much brighter future for 2021. We all have conscience that this collective challenge will have deep and long lasting impacts without being really able to assess the magnitude just yet. The Malaysian government has steered, has steered the country to this rough weather by taking an approach focused on six key steps. Resolve, resilience, restart, recover, revitalize, and reform. We have passed the first three stages, resolve and tired addressing and containing COVID-19 by implementing the MCO. Resilience focused on protecting life and livelihoods through the pre hatin economic stimulus package. In May, the country stepped into the restart phase with the reopening of the economic sectors in an orderly and controlled manner. More recently, on the 5th of June, the Prime Minister of Malaysia unveiled, unveiled Panjana, or National Economic Recovery Plan. That was the fourth step. Panjana is focusing on three key trusts. Empower people, propel businesses, and stimulate the economy with another 35 billion ringgit injected and topping the 260 billion initiated in March. Dr. Sri Mustafa, Minister of Economic Affairs, will share with us the situation from the inside and the action the government is putting in place to overcome 2020. As the latest World Bank forecast uh, shared the latest projection with a minus 3.1% of growth for this year and hopefully a rebound for 2021 with 6.9%. On the practical side for this session, I guess you are all used to Zoom by now. Q&A feature will be accessible for you to post all your questions during the keynote address. Feel free to make full use of it. Along that three for this session, we have our chairman, Dato Zainal, who will support me in the Q&A exercise and closing remark. Dato Sri, thank you again for your time, for us, for our members, the floor, or should I say the webcam, is all yours. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to talk to uh, so many of you. I understand there are about uh, 80 participants altogether in this right. uh, webinar. So thank you, the president of the uh, Malaysia French Chamber, and thank you, thank, thank you to Dr. Zainal as well for making this possible. I wouldn't say much. The purpose is for me to listen to you. I've listened to you, Mr. Valdin. Uh, you sp spoke about retrenchment, about investments, about survey. Uh, I think the gist of the, uh, the main outcome of the survey uh, is that uh, French companies still have uh, confidence in the long-term uh, prospects of the Malaysian economy. Of course, uh, at present, we're going through a very difficult period. Every country is going uh, through this very challenging period. Uh, but we're now in a recovery pace. Yeah? Uh, we, have, we were in almost total lockdown in the first couple of weeks. Uh, shops were closed, uh, factories were, were closed, uh, almost no cars on the road. Uh, but now in this recovery phase, uh, beginning the 10th of, uh, of June, we've opened up every sector of the Malaysian economy. And I know that the French Chamber has been talking to uh, the Ministry of National Trade Industry, METI, 
Uh, they've been helping you. Uh, I'm sure you've been talking to your other colleagues from Europe as well. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I'm pleased that these engagements have been very useful. We've been able to listen to some of your issues and challenges. We have responded. We have responded to some of them. Of course, uh, we've not been able to resolve every problem, but I can assure you that we'll continue to listen to you. Uh, French investments in this country are very sizable. Uh, you have some very iconic investments in number of areas, automotive, aerospace. Uh, uh, these are some examples yeah, uh, where French investments are highly appreciated. And uh, I'm glad to know that uh, uh, French companies uh, are doing okay. Uh, this year, of course, uh, is challenging. Uh, the government, as you say, uh, we have uh, done a lot. Uh, we have spent about altogether 295 billion ringgit. We actually have four packages altogether. One announced during the previous government, uh, three by Tasu Muhyiddin, the current uh, Prime Minister. Uh, but you can see from the various packages that we have made gradual adjustments. The wage subsidy, which probably not many of you are, uh, are eligible for this. Yeah? Uh, I mean, originally it was for uh, three months, now it's been extended another three months. This is, this is an example of, of how we've been listening to uh, feedback from the ground. <coughs> Uh, and uh, uh, in terms of funding uh, from the banks as well, tourism sector is important. Uh, we're trying to get this started uh, all over again. There have been some issues on, uh, on uh, uh, expats, on, on CEOs who, are, who, who left Malaysia and trying to come back. Uh, we have been looking at this uh, seriously in the last uh, few days, uh, and we hope uh, there will be some uh, decision in the very near future. Uh, this involves uh, CEOs and dependents as well. Huh? Not to, I'm not too sure how many uh, of your uh, colleagues from France who have gone back and have not been able to come back to Malaysia. Uh, but uh, this matter has been raised by the EU Chamber, representing all European countries and other Chambers of Commerce as well. So we are dealing with this subject. Overall, I think in the beginning, when we first started, started to open um, uh, the Malaysian economy for companies in manufacturing to operate, there were some challenges, logistics challenges and others. A uh, couple of weeks, but now I think it's not an issue at all. So I'm interested to to uh, to, to learn from you uh, what challenges you you're facing now. I'm sure that you have raised some distinct issues with the Ministry of the International Trade Industry. Many have been dealing with them, but as Minister in charge of the economy, uh, of course, I'm also keen to to find out uh, how you are doing in terms of uh, uh, the current uh, level of operations. Are you at 100%, for example, or 80%? Uh, what are the current challenges you're facing? What about, I'm interested to know uh, the, uh, the, the state of the external economy in terms of external demand. Uh, of course, we have allowed production uh, to restart in Malaysia. It's got to do also with external demand, uh, demand from uh, 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 some of the export markets, including from France. Yeah? I'm interested to know in terms of headcount, in terms of employment. Uh, are you stable now? Or are, are, have you retrenched some of your employees? So those are, some issues that I'll be interested uh, to, to listen to. As I say, uh, I value this opportunity to, to listen to some feedback from the French business community in Malaysia. Thank you once again, Mr. Worley. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe our, our chairman will start with uh, the first question and we will do all this, uh, this exchange with the, the key uh, figures you are mentioning about. Thank you, Gilles. Uh, Salam alaikum, Dato Sri. Thank you very much for joining us uh, today. Uh, before I ask um, the first question, since you mentioned about wanting to understand further on the uh, performance of the French companies, maybe I will just take uh, about a minute just to give the key salient points of a survey that we ran recently. Thank you to all the members for your feedback. Some of the uh, key points that we captured in the survey, uh, that was three, I'll just uh, mention it. Uh, first of all, in terms of uh, sales and business, 56% of the companies expect a sales drop of uh, minus 20 to minus 50% in 2020 versus 2019. 66. Uh, 56, 56%, yeah, 56 expect a sales drop, 20 to 50%. 53% uh, of French families in Malaysia will be freezing any new operations and or investments in Malaysia for the year 2020. 
while 9% will continue uh, further investments in 2021. I believe that's because they are now just consolidating and uh, just uh, seeing the impact of COVID-19 and also re-evaluating uh, their strategies. Uh, uh, one good figure, 89% uh, think that Malaysia remains an attractive business destination. So that's still very positive. 69% uh, of participating companies have not and do not plan to do any retrenchment, 69%. But uh, that, that also means 31% are, are, are thinking of um, uh, retrenchment, but 69% um, is not, so that's not too bad. Um, and those are the, 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 main, the main points, uh, Datu Sri. When I look at the list of questions here, um, I believe that the government has, uh, is very commendable in terms of launching the Panjana and the Prihatin package. So perhaps if I can put the question back to you, Datu Sri, in terms of the sort of feedback that you have received not only from us, but also from the business community uh, as a whole in terms of the economic impact so far on these two packages. Are you happy with it? And which areas does the government think needs to be further improved? Well, uh, we, we've done uh, surveys uh, and other people have done surveys as well. Uh, and all these surveys uh, indicate that, uh, in general, people are happy. Yeah? Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the level of satisfaction is, is very high. Yeah? Uh, so that reflects uh, confidence in our ability to deal with, with this uh, pandemic. Yeah? Uh, that's point number one. Point number two, our focus has been two main areas. One is to help uh, the poor, the V40, uh, uh, with food and other basic supplies. Uh, and secondly, we've been focusing on small and medium enterprises. Those have been the two priority areas, SMEs uh, and also uh, those in the, the, the B40 group, the poor people of Malaysia. And uh, they, I think uh, they are happy uh, that, for example, the loan moratorium, for example, uh, allocations uh, to, uh, to uh, enhance financing for micro entrepreneurs, for example, uh, the uh, uh, help being given uh, to train them in, in the digital economy, uh, and uh, the Ministry of Health, of course, has been provided uh, additional uh, money. Uh, so, uh, in general, uh, people are happy on the ground. But there are gaps. For example, uh, the largest, largest companies, the multinationals and media companies, uh, companies in the middle category, uh, they, they, they think that we should, for example, the, the wage threshold, yeah? 4,000 and below, which is an issue we've been getting from everywhere. Yeah? Uh, I mean, we're getting a lot of feedback uh, that they want that to be, that threshold to be uh, increased, yeah? Uh, for, um, only, as you know, only employees uh, who are getting uh, uh, wages of 4,000 and below are eligible for this wage subsidy, yeah? So these are some feedback, yeah? Uh, overall, uh, I think the other, of course, is not just uh, dollars and cents. It is issue of engagement, yeah? I think uh, MITI has been engaging with uh, this business community I've been engaging the Minister of, Minister of Finance, Minister of Finance as well, been engaging. We've been uh, uh, quite, uh, uh, you know, uh, hands-on in the sense that we are keeping our ears uh, close uh, to the ground. We've been listening to people. We've been having uh, conferences, video conferences, webinars. Eh? And uh, I think this is important. The flow of uh, information, communication, despite uh, some uh, constraints, uh, the uh, the flow of communication, I think, is good, and this is equally important. It's not just the dollars and cents, but uh, the, the the fact that we care for you, the fact that we see you and talk to you and try to understand your problems. And uh, although not all issues have been resolved, but I know for a fact that quite a number of issues have been dealt with uh, by government. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. One of the findings uh, we found in our survey, which is not really a surprise, is that our SMEs and uh, our entrepreneurs have been having a tough time uh, because they are also not accessing some of the financing support here in Malaysia and have no access to the French financing support uh, to go through this, uh, this rough, uh, especially cash flow situations. 
Uh, in the future, do you think there would be more access for foreign entrepreneurs who are also contributing to the, to the, to the local economy and developing skills here uh, to be fully integrated? For example, in France, we don't make any difference as long as you are a company operating in France, you have full access. Yeah, uh, at the moment, uh, uh, you, I mean, you're right, in, in, in some countries, uh, whatever uh, help is given is given respective of uh, ownership uh, or, or, or respective of uh, income class perhaps. Eh? Although in this country we do help the M40 as well. Eh? But this is uh, an issue that has been raised eh? uh, because some micro enterprises, yeah, uh, some of them are accessible to, to certain people only and of course uh, foreigners are not included. So we take your point. Yeah? Uh, we understand what you mean. Uh, but for the moment, it is uh, available to uh, the help for the SMEs uh, are confined to, to the Malaysian owned enterprises. Datu Sri, one very hot question. Yeah, okay. Datu Sri, one very hot question is you mentioned it just now. It is on the immigration and the ability of some of the uh, French and also um, uh, not only French nationals, but we also have other expats of other nationalities who are running businesses here. Their inability to to come back. Uh, and one one comment that is made a lot is if the government allowed MM2H uh, holders to come back, why not residence pass? Because residence pass, these are people that are going to come back and help to crank up the business and help to stimulate the economy. So could you kindly comment on that, please? We've been dealing with this in the last uh, few weeks. Uh, as, as, as I speak, there's a meeting going on. <clears throat> so I can assure you that uh, we've been listening to you uh, and an uh, announcement will be made in the very near future on this by, by, by the relevant minister. Uh, but I can uh, assure you that uh, we, uh, we, we understand the situation. Uh, it is important to, to ensure that uh, the uh, businesses, uh, you know, continue to, uh, uh, to, to operate and in some cases some businesses are dependent on, 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 on some key people. So this matter has been brought up uh, to the government of Malaysia and we are actively dealing with this and there will be an announcement of this in the very near future. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you, you mentioned recently that uh, the, the challenge we face now with Malaysia in terms of consumption is that people are, are still have fear to go out and uh, this might impact uh, the slowdown of the economy. With uh, the different package which have been launched, do you think uh, it's going to be enough to overcome the situation? Do we already feel some, uh, some change of attitude? Uh, do the shopping malls start to, to have some activity again? Do the businesses really start to to pick up again, or is it still very flat at the moment? I think uh, we've been dealing with this uh, issue. Uh, uh, we've been we've done well, and we have been uh, very cautious as well, uh, mindful of uh, you know the, the risk that we, we might face. As you know, uh, in the beginning, uh, I was total almost a total lockdown. Yeah, uh, many of us didn't go out from our homes, but now you can see lots of cars on the road. You can see more people in shopping and complexes, restaurants. There's a further liberalisation uh, yesterday already announced. Yeah? Uh, uh, now it depends on the size of the table. Before that, it was respective of size. So we've been opening up. I mean, you can have meetings now uh, in a hotel up to 250 people. Yeah? Before that, it was no go. Uh, now you can have uh, uh, marriage, uh, marriages conducted. Yeah? Before this, it was a uh, house of worship have been uh, gradually opened up. So we've been taking, uh, taking this uh, cautious approach, but uh, the way forward is that there's been a gradual op uh, opening up. The uh, shopping malls, I think there are more people. Uh, it's got to do partly with, uh, with a very strict uh, SOPs observed by sh some shopping malls. We've been informed that uh, as you go in uh, into a shopping mall, uh, you, get, you, you get checked yeah, by uh, someone, temperature check in particular, but as you walk into the mall, you, know, you go to every every outlet. Yeah? They also insist on some kind of uh, check, and this is I think is, this has deterred people from uh, from shopping. So we are, we're dealing with this, yeah. Uh, but sometimes uh, it's nothing to do with government. I mean, I think people are cautious. 
the, the, the operators of those retail outlets themselves are very cautious, so they have taken extra care. As a result, uh, in, some, in some shopping malls, not every shopping mall, you have to go through, you know, every outlet you go, you're subject to the same procedure. So these are uh, extra precautions taken by individual uh, shop owners. But uh, as I say, we are aware of this. Uh, the fear uh, of, of uh, I mean, in the beginning, uh, there was a lot of fear. Now people are becoming more confident. It's got to do also with our ability, the ability of our health authorities uh, to deal with this pandemic. We've done very well. Uh, it's been uh, double digit uh, in terms of new cases, uh, single digit on, on some days. So uh, in, in our view, it has stabilized. So co confidence is returning. Confidence in the ability of our, our health authorities to deal with this uh, pandemic uh, effectively, and that's been uh, proven. Uh, consumer confidence uh, is returning. Uh, I mean, it's not fully, hasn't fully recovered yet. And this is so important. Retail is a very important part of, of any economy. The service sector is important. Uh, tourism, as you know, we have allowed uh, domestic tourism uh, before the 10th of June. You cannot cross uh, state boundaries yeah, uh, uh, without permission. Uh, now, of course, it's free. You can go to Langkawi, you can go to Penang. I'm sure that some uh, of your colleagues, uh, French businessmen, uh, are traveling throughout the country. Before this, uh, there was some concern. So uh, this is a reflective of our confidence. Yeah? And that confidence is returning. Confidence in the ability of our doctors and nurses to control the situation. Consumer confidence is, is, is coming back. Uh, of course, it's not back to the normal level, but you can see, uh, you know, going forward, I think uh, there will be more crowds in restaurants and shopping complexes, and uh, we're not back to normal yet, uh, but uh, it is quite consistent with our own expectation, although I think we wish uh, this happens uh, quicker. I mean, we wish that, you know, the crowds will return uh, to some shopping malls, uh, of course, observing some SOPs, wearing masks and those kind of things. Uh, so we hope the fear factor will be gradually uh, gone in the next uh, uh, couple of weeks. You speak about the new normal or the normal. Uh, is Malaysia, like countries uh, like New Zealand, for example, has changed uh, their, their business model, let's say, or have adjusted their business model? Is Malaysia also considering to make some adjustment to, to the normal? Uh, business model? Business model. What is that? Um, you know, sorry, New, New Zealand decided. Oh yeah, some countries, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah this, I, I think uh, we're moving in that direction. Yeah, we have been cautious, but we we moving that direction. So going forward, now it is it is uh, this is the uh, the uh, what do you call this? Uh, this is the yeah, this is peak in in in, in, in Malaysia. It's called uh, PKPP. Back to speak. Yeah? Recovery. A recovery. Recovery. Recovery period, and there's been a lot of legislation. We're not back in New Zealand. Uh, I think is back. I'm back back to the good old days. Yeah? Uh, we're not there yet, but we're moving in that direction. Uh, we don't know when uh, the current phase will end. Is you know uh, August 31st. This is this is uh, the recovery phase. Uh, MCO recover MCO R or MCO. Yeah? Uh, this is R MCO uh, will end on, on August 31st. There'll be a review a few days before that. Uh, going forward, if there are no, no spike in cases, uh, no big increase in cases, uh, I'm sure that. Uh, we will seriously consider opening up. Yeah, I mean it's already open, but uh, tourism, for example, international travel. Yeah, uh, there are no tourists from Singapore, from France, from Japan, not yet. Yeah, uh, but uh, we will. We have, we've been talking with this. I mean, the travel people have been talking to us, and uh, uh, at some point of time, uh, we will. Uh, we will. Uh, you know, we will make a decision on this. Thank you, that is sweet. Yeah. On the subject of, of digital, you mentioned in one of your uh, talks that you gave recently that government agencies, there is a big push towards digi digitalization. Uh, that's going to make hopefully uh, easier to do business, faster turnaround and so on. How, how serious and how aggressive is the government moving towards, towards that direction? Well, uh, COVID-19 has been uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, main uh, motivating factors for many things. Huh? Uh, I mean, digital, digitalization is certainly one of them. One of the biggest push uh, factors for us to accelerate digitalization is COVID-19. Uh, and uh, this requires, uh, of course, a concerted effort by the government. 
some of the land officers, many of them are already uh, online. You can bill, I mean, you can pay bills on online. Of course, inquiries, I mean, there's less and less face-to-face -face, uh, communication now. I think the issue is uh, uh, how, how, how fast can we speed up uh, the space of digital, digitalization. Yeah? Uh, it differs from department uh, to department. Instructions out. I think uh, we take your point that we have to monitor very closely. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the private sector, uh, SMEs, uh, some small businesses, uh, they are I mean, e-wallet and cashless is catching up. Huh? Uh, the home deliveries, for example, is becoming uh, more and more the norm uh, in this country and indeed many parts of the world. So if you are encouraging the private sector to digitalize, yeah, including SMEs, uh, it doesn't make sense if the, the, if, the, if the government is not moving in tandem. I take your point. So we take this very seriously. Uh, and in government, of course, uh, Mampu is the agency responsible uh, for driving uh, this, uh, this initiative. Uh, I think the point is, I think we have to keep track. We need to be able to uh, keep track of some key milestones huh, in the next uh, few weeks. Huh? So I think is, is a, although you don't say it directly, uh, I think uh, taking cue from your question, it is important for government to monitor on a regular basis uh, how fast we're moving in that direction. I'm talking about government. The question is about your question is about government. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, looking towards recovery and uh, beyond, some of the government have recently announced that they are making some strategic move on uh, new technologies such as uh, hydrogen power transport, renewable energies. Uh, with very specific package. Uh, has Malaysia any plan uh, for as any specific sector to be favored or to really push as a strategy for the country? Technology is a, a very important factor. This is, I mean, of course, there's been a very disruptive, uh, creative disruption. Um, I mean, a lot of changes, uh, digital, of course, but um, in companies, in factories, uh, lots of things happening. This is a, a very important area. Going forward, we believe there's going to be uh, uh, more changes uh, uh, happening on the technology front. Uh, well, technology policy, we have policies. Yeah? We have a dedicated ministry called MOSTI, uh, which is dedicated to technology and in innovation. Uh, and we have a new minister, uh, which is, uh, of course, uh, actively working on, on this. Uh, we have uh, recently announced this concept of an innovation sandbox. Yeah? 100 million ringgit has been uh, provided for that. These are examples. Uh, lots of things are happening in you know, universities as well. But technology can be uh, local and foreign as well. There's been quite a bit of foreign technology uh, coming from France to this country in, in a few sectors, automotive, uh, aerospace, and electronics, uh, for example. So that's uh, coming from overseas. We also have to focus more and more on homegrown technology as well. We need foreign technology, but we need, to, uh, we need also to, 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 to strengthen our ability to uh, to develop uh, new technologies as well. So this is uh, a very important area. So uh, the future is not only about digitalization, it's about automation, it's about big data, it's about AI. Yeah? Uh, indeed, these are very important uh, areas for us to look at in the medium to longer term to be a, a developed nation. Thank you. And this is where, this is where perhaps uh, we can explore further areas collaboration uh, which, uh, uh, with uh, French companies. So at the moment, there is no plan for a specific envelope, for example, into really pushing one sector. Okay. Yeah. That was really a related question to, to that, to, to sectors. What about infrastructure? Because uh, we note that governments talk about stimulus, stimulating the economy, one of those ways could be investing in infrastructure. Uh, could you give us a sense on what sort of infrastructure is the government thinking of? And in uh, so much budget has been allocated to uh, the COVID-19, does the government still have enough budget for these uh, uh, infrastructure projects? Well, France is uh, well known, well known for uh, its strength in, in infrastructure, uh, and there's a few French companies uh, in the past and are present involved in infrastructure development. Infrastructure, of course, is hard and soft. Yeah, uh, equally important is the, is the soft infrastructure, the people, the uh, uh, 
uh, online uh, learning among our students in the universities, I mean, the infrastructure to support that as well. The, 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 the hard uh, infrastructure would be um, uh, roads and bridges and railways and airports eh? uh, and, 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 and ports. So these are the main uh, uh, infrastructure projects. Uh, ports, uh, many of them have been privatized. Uh, there's a few activities going on in Port Klang, uh, in Penang and, and PTP other places. Yeah? Um, I mean, these are private uh, companies, many of them. Uh, so there's some projects going on. So that, that's as far as ports are concerned. I know that some states are keen to, uh, to give up their, their port infrastructure. Uh, number two, airports. Uh, airports, uh, we have, uh, there have been proposals to expand, for example, TLIA, yeah? which is uh, now 20, uh, how many is that, 96, huh? uh, almost, uh, well, it's about 25 years old. Yeah? Uh, it's quite busy now. So there's been some proposals for export expansion. Uh, some new airports have been planned. Penang has been expanded. Kota Baru, uh, there are plans to, uh, uh, to build a new terminal. So those are uh, some um, uh, investments in, the, in, in airport development. Uh, railway, you, you are very familiar with uh, what's going on. Uh, East Coast Railway, the double tracking, MRT, MRT 1 completed, MRT 2. Uh, also in Sabah and Sarawak, uh, that will be mainly a um, uh, role. So infrastructure will continue to, to play an important role, uh, quite a bit coming from government and some from the private, private sector as well, who welcome private sector participation and in infrastructure development. So overall, I mean, ports, uh, the some expansion uh, been uh, undertaken by the companies which own the, the ports. Uh, some airports uh, have plans to be expanded uh, although the landscape is going to be totally different uh, in going forward when it comes to air travel. Uh, roads, I think we continue to, to, to expand our road system. Uh, indeed, infrastructure is, is important for, uh, for, for logistics, uh, efficiency, uh, and also uh, to uh, improve the uh, uh, level of investor confidence in this country. We, need, we, we have you know, good infrastructure, but we have to continue making improvements to our infrastructure, uh, hard and soft. Thank you. Can, can you maybe just touch on the high-speed rail? We have a few companies who are, of course, in that field. Uh, what is the status at the moment? High-speed rail, uh, uh, that's Dell Singapore. Uh, 31st May was uh, uh, the, the, the suspension period. Uh, the two countries have agreed to extend the suspension period uh, to the end of this year. So we'll, uh, we have been having uh, discussions, technical discussions at this point of time with our Singapore uh, counterpart at the technical level uh, to share with uh, the Singapore authorities uh, the revision, revision of our plans. Uh, it's got to do mainly with, uh, with a cost reduction. Yeah. Uh, and uh, these discussions are still going on. Uh, hopefully by, by year end, uh, we, we can come up with a, a conclusion to these discussions. Huh? So the, what we call the suspension period has been extended for seven months. Originally, it was 31st May, uh, now uh, it's gone to 31st December. So discussions are, are, are ongoing between, uh, at a technical level, within the Singapore and Malaysian uh, authorities uh, for, for us to share yeah, uh, our proposal, uh, uh, what we call uh, HSR 2.0. Uh, the first proposal was uh, what was uh, agreed before, uh, and now we're working on, on, a, new, on a new proposal. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, specific topic. Uh, you mentioned earlier about, uh, we mentioned about recovery and the importance of uh, FDIs in, uh, in Malaysia. I know it's something that is uh, close to your heart as well. Now we see with the situation and the development with, uh, uh, with the commercial issues between US and, uh, and China that uh, Vietnam is getting a lot of attraction for our companies to invest and to continue in Southeast Asia, of course, we, we do the benchmark of the countries who have been doing well and are attractive at the moment. With uh, Vietnam being uh, in a free trade agreement with the uh, EU, uh, do you think uh, that uh, they could have a competitive advantage and should Malaysia reconsider their position on the, on the trade agreement? Uh, Vietnam trade agreement. The EU. 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 Uh, this has been well. I, I launched the uh, the uh, negotiations between Malaysia and EU uh, 
uh, on on the uh, on the possible signing of a, a trade agreement, and I was uh, the one who suspended the. I started it. And I suspended those negotiations. Uh, I've been yes. in, in in and out of Brussels a few times. Uh, we have had discussions with uh, uh, the Commission in a few places. Uh, at the moment, with COVID and all, uh, that, that, of course, that has been put on the back burner for quite a while. Uh, and COVID, of course, uh, uh, you know, there's not been too much action on that front, trade agreement. But going forward, you know, we, we have signed so many trade agreements. Uh, we open uh, for business. But as you know, there's some challenges uh, with this EU uh, negotiation. Uh, it's got to do with the uh, uh, very high standards yeah, that uh, we find uh, challenging in some instances. Uh, it's got to do also with uh, the climate surrounding uh, oil palm. Yeah, uh, be frank about this. Uh, but of course, going forward as, a, as an open economy, we signed so many uh, trade agreements. Yeah, uh, per, on a personal level, I hope that uh, we can resume uh, these negotiations in the near future. So do we. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Uh, Datu Sri, I want to bring back the question. No, to quite, SA. Quite questions are coming from only two of you. Eh? The rest are just listening. <laughs> no, no, okay. We are reading some of the questions as well. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then. I... Yeah. We have to earn our lunch today, Datu Sri. That's why we are uh, asked. To, we have been tasked to ask you all these questions. So okay. a lot of the, the members. Um, have asked about uh, the question about SMEs and uh, I see another question here from for the members ask, asking for further elaboration. I guess you mentioned just now on the financing so SMEs is more for Malaysian SMEs. Some incentives are applicable for uh, the SMEs but of course SMEs always want more. What is your your input and your advice on the ability of the government to do more? What 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 can you do? What do you hope that the SMEs themselves can can do? Uh, firstly, uh, as I said, we have uh, put in place four packages altogether, and those pa packages uh, two, three, and four uh, have responded to some issues raised by by SMEs. Yeah, uh, and the, the latest uh, uh, Penjana package. Uh, has uh, uh, additional support for SMEs. So SMEs are, are, are very uh, important. Uh, well, the, uh, we, we monitor this uh, on a regular basis. Yeah? Uh, the issue is, uh, you know, when is recovery coming and how much more help is needed and how much money we have. So those are some questions uh, that need to be asked. Uh, as the economy recovers, of course, as more and more people go back to work, uh, as uh, more and more businesses uh, open, uh, there will be less uh, need for help. Yeah? Uh, the help was required during the, the last uh, two, three months uh, when businesses were, were closed. Yeah? So, uh, so our, if, you, if you ask us, yeah, the, the first priority is to get business started again because we know that when businesses uh, start operating again, they will require, require less help. When, when uh, the, the, the inflows of money, when the cash inflows, yeah, when the cash register start ringing again, yeah, uh, then there will be less need for help. And the uh, moratorium, for example, has been uh, very helpful. Six months moratorium. Uh, at least they need not worry about, about cash flow uh, problem. So the issue is, uh, you know, um, whether we have more space uh, to provide help for SMEs. Uh, overall, I think they're quite happy. Uh, some sectors are still coming to us, the tourism sector, for example. And in some cases, it's got to do with uh, global demand and domestic demand. Uh, I mean, even though you provide help, uh, because uh, demand is not there. Uh, it's difficult to push uh, some of these SMEs. Uh, tourism is, is the biggest example. We have tour guides, tour operators, uh, the budget hotels, uh, some of them still struggling, some as a matter of fact have closed. So the government has, has done our best. Uh, we've been getting good support for SMEs. It's got to, it's got to do also with uh, the, the, the demand side. Uh, and demand comes also from external sources. Uh, we have been uh, earning uh, a big uh, amount of money uh, from tourists coming to this country. And when that amount, when there's no foreign tourists at all, of course, SMEs, I mean, uh, tourism sector has got a big impact on the whole economy, but 3.5 million people are directly and indirectly employed in the tourism sector. You can imagine how important that is. Of course, for countries like Thailand, uh, it's a lot more. So, uh, so some sectors 
are finding it, uh, you know, I mean, they are, they are managing, they are uh, slowly recovering. Some sectors will find uh, a little bit more, I mean, they need a bit, a bit more time before they can, they can recover, or fully recover. Okay. In regards of operation in Malaysia, um, as you know, we have a few business centers and we have many companies who are using Malaysia as a regional hub. Now, I understand that at the moment we have a window which is after uh, 31st of August in order to resume regional uh, transit uh, and business in the region. Is there any hope to open borders gradually within that uh, before 31st of August like we are doing now with Singapore? Uh, firstly, uh, we thank you for your support. Uh, indeed, uh, a number of French companies uh, uh, have made Malaysia its regional base. I think Zaina, you are you one of them. Huh? The, the company you work for, uh, th this company is making KL as its regional base. So we we, we, we hope that uh, Zaina will continue doing the work they was doing in Invest KL, huh? <laughs> uh, getting more and more French companies, other companies to make a KL its regional base. That's our our target. Yeah. Uh, and uh, going forward, uh, we'll be more aggressive uh, in uh, promoting uh, companies to make uh, Malaysia uh, its regional base. Of course, we have to be competitive. We have to offer better services. We've got to be more efficient. Connectivity is important, and we'll strive uh, to do all those things. Huh? The uh, uh, business travel, you know, Singapore and, uh, and China, for example, uh, have opened up uh, this window for business travelers, uh, limited. Uh, and uh, I think uh, that's a very important point. Uh, for us, I think uh, we're dealing with, uh, with our own people who, who've got resident pass. Yeah? I mean, uh, those what we call EP1, uh, those who are holding uh, permits, uh, who've gone back and they want to come back, that's a priority. And as I say, as we speak, we're dealing with this. Uh, hopefully in the next, uh, in very near future, we'll be able to make an announcement. Uh, so we have started this conversation. Uh, on on uh, on business travel, even on tourism, uh, with our neighbours. Yeah, I mean we have to prepare. I mean we cannot wait uh, until the whole thing is over. 31st August, that, and we we we're not going to wait until 31st August before we start uh, thinking about this thing. So uh, we've been talking to people on this, um, and uh, some of you might be aware because we've been engaging with you. So we we're open to this, uh, but uh, we are mindful also of the health risk, and uh, we are consulting on a regular basis the Ministry of Health. Uh, we do not want, as a result of this op opening of, of borders, there's a spike in cases. Yeah? Because as you know, uh, the foreign cluster is, is, is quite, quite big. We started with the religious cluster, and now we have uh, illegal immigrants yeah, in, in, in detention camps. This cluster, uh, I think, is, is, is stabilizing. Uh, but uh, many countries are still you know, uh, are closing the borders. Yeah? But we, we know that some countries are already beginning to discuss this. And Malaysia is also beginning to discuss this. In other words, my point is, we're not going to wait until August 31st before we consider uh, some of these uh, opening up measures. Thank you. And this is, this is important for, for business, yeah? Because uh, some French men or French companies in, in Kuala Lumpur, they're also in Vietnam, also in Singapore. And it's important uh, in ASEAN to, to have a, a, you know, a flow of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, facilitation for business travel. Yeah, correct. We also have, on the other hand, a few of our members who have put on hold some investments, some developments, because they need professionals to fly in and uh, have also to have to reschedule their projects. So hopefully we can also solve their problem in, the, in a short while. Yeah. Okay. Datu Sri, we still have a few more minutes with you. Yeah. Um, the, we, we've talked a lot about the stimulus package and quite soon it's going to be budget time again uh, towards the end of the year and also the, the next uh, uh, Malaysia plan, the 12th Malaysia plan. I believe that there is of course a lot of dependency on the public investment, government to invest, but I'm sure you would also want the private investments. Um, how can our members continuously give uh, feedback to, to your, your um, area, Datu Sri, and also to the government on, um, on ideas about how we can play a role on um, shaping the budget and also the 12th Malaysia plan? 
That is the normal channel. I mean, you have uh, strong links with MITI. Uh, I'm sure you must be uh, having a lot of engagements with MITI and MIDA. Uh, those are normal channels, and I know you meet other people as well. We always open. Uh, uh, budget is going to be on the 6th of November. Uh, the top ownership plan uh, will be early next year. Uh, and uh, uh, if you have any ideas, technology, for example, France is strong technology, innovation. Eh? Uh, we need to be a more innovative country. We need to be digital ready. We need to embrace the latest technology. So we like to, maybe if you have any ideas, uh, drop us a line, yeah, an email. <coughs> and if there's a need for us to have face, face to face uh, uh, conversation, we'll do that. Eh? So feel free to, uh, uh, to contact us. Like what we're having now. Yeah? This is uh, also a feedback session. Yeah? Useful for us and hopefully useful, useful, useful for you as well. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah. Take full note of that. Uh, another question regarding uh, the recovery plan is on uh, one of the topic is uh, skill development. Uh, you mentioned about uh, France. Uh, we have a lot of companies who have high level of expertise. We have also entrepreneurs who are looking into Malaysia who could give a hand and uh, set up their operation to develop the skills in Malaysia. But for smaller companies and entrepreneurs, today the entry ticket is still very high. Uh, would there be in the future any possible revision of uh, the, the minimum capital pay for, for entrepreneurs to settle down here and to be able to help in developing the skills in particular and other and other uh, fields in the industry, in the local industry. The barriers to entry, so for the barriers to entry for entrepreneurs is quite high. It's a lot of capital. Uh, well, uh, okay. If you can be a little bit uh, more specific and uh, write to us and we'll try to handle that. Huh? Yeah. So this is what barriers to entry. Yeah. For, for, uh, small for example, businesses. Min yeah, minimum paid up capital in order to obtain the work permit in Malaysia is quite high and some we are missing some entrepreneurs who could really contribute to Malaysian economy, uh, maybe yeah. because of that. Yeah, the chamber might want to write to us and yeah, we will look to that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Dr. Sui, if I can, uh, with a few minutes uh, that we have left, if I zoom in again to uh, some of the sectors, um, perhaps, I, I know this could be under METI, but you may have some insights into it. Sectors like the uh, automotive sector, our members are very interested in that sector and, and the national automotive policy. Uh, can you give us a direction on that? Maybe the defence sector uh, as well. Can you give us some um, uh, thinking behind uh, those couple of uh, uh, sectors to start off with? On the automotive sector, I think the, the challenge is uh, our Malaysian market. Yeah? A TIV is about 600,000. Uh, there's a big constraint. I mean, you have to have a, a vibrant automotive industry, you need to have a bigger, a bigger market. Therefore, the focus will, will, will have to be on exports. And I know that a number of European companies have, uh, have come to us uh, to, to, uh, to, to propose uh, setting up uh, operations here with a view to making Malaysia a space to penetrate the region. And I must say that has not been very successful. I mean, uh, as I said, our market is small, yeah? and therefore we need to go out. Going out with exports, export, you have to be competitive. So that, that's the, 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 the issue that, that we have. Uh, some of the countries have got uh, you know, different policies uh, compared to us, of course. Um, uh, they have their own uh, consideration. But uh, if, if there are French companies which are interested in making Malaysia its regional base, uh, then it's something that, that we'll seriously consider. I'm sure Mitty will look at that. Uh, but uh, auto market, of course, might, might change. Uh, the, land, the, the landscape might change post-COVID. Yeah? Uh, there's been some recovery uh, in, in auto sales. Yeah? Yeah, it was uh, in the hundreds. Uh, or, I mean, hardly any sales in, in April. Uh, now it's gone up. Uh, and then recent incentive, yeah? uh, excise duties, uh, uh, sales tax, for example, exemption for foreign cars by 50%. Yeah? Uh, that should help. Yeah? And for, lo for locally uh, assembled uh, uh, vehicles, if I'm not mistaken, the total exemption of sales set. So these are incentives, but this is for a short term. Hopefully this will revive the auto industry. I mean, but that's more for the local market. But my, my response to your question is, you know, French companies will have to look beyond 
Malaysia, making Malaysia as a base. On the defence sector, uh, this is, uh, of course, very important. And defence uh, procurement, uh, I mean, uh, expenditure can be huge, lumpy, yeah? uh, some years big, some years none, because that's the nature of, of defence. Yeah? Uh, I've got no authority to speak on, on this subject, uh, but uh, of course we have, we have fiscal challenges, yeah, as, as usual, and uh, we have to look at our priorities. Yeah? Uh, and uh, I know that you've been talking to your colleagues in the Defence Ministry, they'll, they'll be in a better position to share with you what the plans are for the future. Yeah? But uh, here again, we are looking for some kind of defence production capabilities. If there's some French companies we are, we are interested uh, to start uh, production in Malaysia, I think uh, uh, Maida and others will be interested to talk to you. Yeah? So those are my thoughts on automotive and, and defence industry. Uh, questions on the aerospace, uh, aeronautical sector and supply chain. Uh, we have seen that uh, MAS has a, a new CEO. We know that uh, Asia is having some difficulty as well. Do you have any, anything to share about uh, aerospace? Uh, you're talking about reopening of airlines or...? Uh, the difficulty of the aerospace industry in Malaysia and how, how we could overcome it. General. Yeah, it's the general aerospace industry. Uh, well, of course, now uh, airlines have been badly hit. Yeah? Uh, I'm not in the loop. I used to chair the, the National Aerospace Council for a few years. I was a meeting and I, I've left that, that job for many years now. Uh, but those days, when we launched the aerospace, aerospace blueprint, uh, the market was different. A lot of excitement, yeah? Big orders, China, Asia, India, South Asia, Malaysia, Asia, you know, you name it, yeah? Very exciting. That was uh, 2018, 19, yeah? Uh, 2017, 18, uh, 19, yeah? Um, yeah. So it, it's been growing rapidly. So uh, Malaysia, we are, you know, suppliers, we manufacture some components some first year, some uh, second year, and when, when orders have been affected, in some cases have been cancelled. So aerospace industry, uh, we're so dependent on the world, yeah? dependent on Airbus, uh, dependent on Boeing, yeah? for example. Uh, you're more familiar than I am when it comes to Airbus. Yeah? Uh, so, uh, so we have to, of course, we want to, I mean, this is a very important sector. We've identified this to be one of the strategic sectors that we want to get involved in. Uh, we see a lot of potential in this. So is, some of these plans have got to be revisited yeah, post-COVID uh, based on current demand. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the aerospace industry has got lots of potential. Uh, we have decided to uh, give priority to this industry, but uh, COVID and post-COVID, there's going to be change in the, uh, in the landscape. And uh, it will probably take a while before air travel uh, 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 gets back to, to, to its good old days. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, probably one more. You want to, last, before you wrap last, up? Last question, okay. Tattoo Sri, in, in every webinar, there's a question on politics. So, sorry to ask you this one also. They should, um, be, they should be in front, isn't it? <laughs> Not <laughs> at the back. <laughs> we, save, we save the best for last. Um, we, we uh, of course, uh, uh, work with the government, work with the government of the day. Uh, and the government has been working very hard um, uh, in, uh, during this pandemic. Anything that our members have to worry about, Datu Sri, when it comes to Malaysian politics? Despite the noises, I mean, we are, we're not on the street, yeah? Uh, we are very uh, civil and disciplined people, yeah? Uh, we respect each other and uh, we've been able to preserve. I think what's important is peace and stability. Uh, the members of parliament, the, 222 of them, they've been making lots of noises, many of them, but that's 222 out of uh, 30 million people, eh? uh, uh, and they are very influential, of course. But uh, what's important is the, uh, for example, we have uh, the previous government launched this uh, shared prosperity vision in, in October last year that was done by the previous government. This government has decided to adopt uh, the same philosophy, yeah? a little tweaking here and there, but the, the three pillars of shared prosperity one is uh, 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 prosperity, development for all. Of course, one is called a uh, decent standard of living. We want to uh, make sure that every Malaysian enjoys a decent standard of living. Uh, number two, development for all, reducing the gas. Number three is a united, uh, prosperous Malaysia. Those are the three uh, principles that was adopted by the previous government. 
this government has decided to continue uh, to adopt the same policy. So there's, there's some continuity. Yeah? Civil servants are still there, uh, working hard uh, for the country. The private sector has been supportive. So my, my, uh, my advice to you on this is that, yes, there are noises, yeah? but uh, Malaysians have been very disciplined. Yeah? Uh, we have observed the law and order. We need to continue making sure our institutions, institutions have been strong, uh, keeping the peace, uh, and there's been some continuity of policies. Uh, in this government, we have uh, people with experience, uh, some new people as well. So the Prime Minister, of course, is very experienced. So we have uh, a mix uh, of all, of all uh, kinds of uh, personalities uh, and putting them together. I think we have, we have done our best. We've done well in the, in the past three months. We, this is a new government, only three months old. Huh? We're only three months old. And it's incredible. I think it's, it's incredible I mean, what we've done, uh, given the fact that we're only three months old. We've been able to do so much in three months. Huh? Uh, and people are happy with what we've done uh, because many of us have been in government for quite some time. So we are ready to, to work as soon as we, we, we be, we've been asked to, uh, to work for the nation. Uh, we're ready to perform our duty. So uh, we are in good, good hands. Civil servants uh, are still there. Uh, they've been a stabilizing factor. Uh, and our politicians are quite disciplined. They see all kinds of things in social media. Uh, uh, but uh, we've been very responsible and we, we, I'm, I'm confident that we'll be able to uh, continue not only maintaining but enhancing the country's uh, stability. Okay, so uh, thank you for this opportunity. And as I said, there are a few things uh, you raised. One was, uh, uh, you know, this uh, threshold, whatever, making uh, minimum capital for uh, foreign SMEs. Number two, uh, foreign SMEs require help as well, yeah? Uh, that's, that's one, number two, and some issues on immigration. On immigration, as I told you, uh, we are dealing with this, and I hope in the very near future there will be an announcement on this. Uh, and, but what's important is that we've been uh, opening up the economy in stages. It's done well, and going forward, we'll continue to, to open a lot more. Um, and uh, we, we, at this point of time, um, uh, there's been proposals uh, for some uh, kind of uh, opening for tourism, yeah? but there's no decision yet. Yeah, uh, because uh, this could create fear and could result in a spike in, in cases. Uh, but going forward, uh, we continue to adapt. We continue to listen uh, to people like you. And if there's a need to make adjustments for the good of everyone, for the good of Malaysia, of course, and in an initial win-win situation, we prepare to consider those proposals. So in that spirit, I uh, look forward to receiving your proposals. And uh, uh, next time, we meet face-to-face. -face over a big lunch paid by the, by the French chamber. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay, so no, thank, you. Really thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, Gilles, I wrap up now? Yes. Yeah, that is three. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for your time. We know that you are incredibly busy. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Uh, just a few points to summarize. First of all, on the government performance, um, I think on the health area, I can speak on behalf of our chamber and also perhaps other chambers too on the health part. We really give the uh, Malaysian government a triple A rating. You've done really well. We all feel very Thank safe. You. And yes. uh, yeah, the numbers uh, um, look very encouraging and that's been really well managed. Uh, we thank you also for the Panjana Prehatin package. Maybe we give you a A rating. A is better than A minus and B. So A rating is uh, still quite good. Focus on SMEs and the B40s. Um, and also you recognize that there's gaps. I think that's great because uh, uh, you are always very open and the uh, shared prosperity vision also, we look forward to participating. Number two is uh, some good news on the immigration. We look forward to that. A lot of our expats look forward to coming back. So we will wait uh, patiently for that. Hopefully they can uh, come back. And uh, thank you also for taking note of the SMEs and their input uh, and, and their feedback too. Uh, number three, it's great to note the digitalization initiatives. You mentioned about Mosti, uh, e-wallets, innovation sandbox, and so on. That's great. I think to create an innovation nation, this is where the uh, uh, French Malaysia Chamber can contribute a lot as well. Number four, infrastructure. We take note ports, airports, rail, Sabah, Sarawak, uh, high-speed rail potentially. Um, uh, we take note of that and um, that the government is looking at that and uh, again our members look forward to participating in that. Uh, last but not least, the sectors, tourism, aerospace and we will certainly give feedback 
on the 12th Malaysia plan as well as the budget. Uh, thank you again, Datu Sri. You've always been very supportive of our chamber. Uh, you, you, you are a great supporter. You are a great friend to us. Definitely, we will buy you lunch. We, we, remain, we remain friends. Yeah. We, yes, we, of course. We, we'll get stronger when I, I, you buy me free lunch. <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, yeah, we'll buy you a nice um, uh, halal French meal. Um, <laughs> please also, um, um, when you get the opportunity, uh, please send our salam to uh, Yang Ahmad Muhammad, Prime Minister as well. Thank you. Uh, please thank him on our behalf for uh, his efforts. And we hope one day that we can also engage in a webinar or a seminar with him in future, yeah. inshallah. Thank you so much, Dr. Sri. Thank you, Zanan. Thank you, James. Thank All you. the best. Yeah. Have a good weekend. Yeah. Thank you. you, too. you too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, thank you. Apa tu? Apa tu?